Welcome to Wine Wednesday with me, Alfie Jean, here to give you a real wine talk today because we're not drinking this week, we're playing songs. I just felt like because I finished the vegan wines box entirely last week, I thought it would be really beneficial to give a full review and kind of rank these wines, um, you know, six to one as to my taste. You know, which ones did I find that I really liked and which ones did I really not like. Um, you know, you can take that with a grain of salt. You know, like I said before, wine is totally up to the drinker. You know, your tastes are your tastes and something that I might not like, you may stink in love. So, totally fine. Um, the Vegan Wines box was really cool and interesting to me because I am a 14 year old, 14 year old? A 14 year vegetarian who recently went vegan. And when I was really, making sure to find out more about what that all entails. I came, I, I got the uh, total information that not all wines are vegan or vegetarian. So I was like, well, if I'm gonna invest into a wine subscription box, I want one that's gonna be vegan and ethical. Um, and I came across the veganwines.com, which is the first vegan wine subscription box that hit the US. It really pulled me in because it was also founded by a female and they really strive to find small family owned businesses. So you're supporting a vegan business, overall that supports small businesses and female led business a female led business so it's just it was just all good for me and i was super excited so they like i said they travel all over to find these sustainable ethical vegan wines and they tell you this little bit of stories they give you recipes to go with each of these bottles and that that right there was the biggest thing that i loved because of becoming a newer vegan it was just nice to have these these delicious delicious recipes that would pair with my favorite wines my favorite types you know um to have that guidance was just lovely and I, I love cooking and found it to be really enjoyable um now to get into the wines i thought i would do you know ranking from like my least favorite to like number one so the first one is a cabernet it is the sensi siento um Cabernet, and I, I was uh, very disappointed for myself because typically I love cabs, but this one tended to be really spicy to me. They actually have heavy notes of spicy red paprika, and it really just wasn't my wasn't my bag. It wasn't something that I really super enjoyed. It was drinkable, but it wasn't like one of those wines that I personally could sit and finish finish the bottle in in a night. You know, it was like have a have a glass. But then I wasn't super motivated to to have another, which you know, all in moderation anyway. But you get what I'm saying. Now this wine is from Maule, Maule, Chile. So this area is super dry. The soil is, is very heavy in quartz, which is quite interesting. Um, the wine itself has the paprika, but also cherries and strawberry notes within it. Um, again, it's rated my least favorite just because a little on the spicy side and uh, that just not my favorite. I don't like spicy. I don't like the spicy wines. Um, next is the Michael Clauda Hatterley Zinfandel and I really had high hopes for the Zinfandel because I I had just recently discovered Zinf Zinfandels. I hadn't had very many and this was my third that I had. And I just find that I don't really care for Zinfandels. Again, they tend to be a little bit more spicy to me and it's not it's not my favorite. This one specifically did linger a lot. Um, even though it has, it has berry and plum and chocolate, it just kind of lingered. It, it's almost like, since it has chocolate, you know, it was almost like the dark chocolate really, um, like settled in and it just wasn't it just wasn't my favorite now they are in Lodi California which is the like Zinfandel capital 
of the U.S. And I love the story of this as well because the founder of the winery grew up in the Midwest in Ohio, and I'm a Midwestern girl from Michigan, now in Indiana, but it made total sense that he was just sick of the winters and he was a cook primarily and then fell in love with wine and was like, you know, I'm just gonna take my $500 little car and make my dreams come true in California. And here he is creating beautiful wines. Um, again, number five, just because it lingered and it just was infidels are not my, not my thing. Next is the Luci di Tommaso Rosso Convinto, which is from the Monte Fa Monte Flat Monte Falco, Italy. I don't know what my problem is. Um, this one, I I also did not do a Wine Wednesday on like the uh, the cab number six. I did not as well, only because this one I. I just decided to enjoy it leisurely, and I'm glad that I did. I did enjoy this a lot. It was really hard to figure out where to really place place these these four in category or in you know one to four. Like how I don't know. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. I had um, some tomato based food with it, and it was just delicious. It just seemed like nothing going down with pairing with that food. So. That is something huge to me. If my wine pairs with my food, I love it. It's fine. Um, now, this, the cool thing about this wine is they're fully organic. So they're vegan and organic, which is really neat. Um, the wine itself has black cherry, dried berries, and plums. So it was a really darker wine, but it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Uh, still number four because I feel like as we move, it just gets better. So number three was the Ohm Handmade, and I really enjoyed that wine for the most part. It had a really great story because they do everything by hand, so they hand pick all the grapes and they destem them with a really great hand by hand technique, and they really try to give authenticity to their wine, and I think that's beautiful. Um, this is a Chilean wine, of course, it's in the Panama Valley of Chile, and they, there's a lot of cherries in there, like cherry jam, raspberry, I don't know if, if um, maybe Chilean wines have cherries frequently in, in their wines, that definitely could be a correlation between, because both of them had um, cherry notes, just thought it was interesting, uh, <laughs> but I, I really liked that, that wine, so number three, very nice. Number two was the Vegamaro, uh, the Negro Mano, the Negro Maro, <laughs> Vegamaro. It was delicious. It was, uh, from Southern Italy. It was really great because they really try to spread the vegan, the vegan message. You know, they use wine as a facilitator to get people wondering why, why vegan. And, um, they have been making wine for a really long time and still have like crazy passion. It's really great. It has vegetal notes, um, crunchy red fruits, and little hints of tobacco. But it made it a really light drinker. Like I could just drink that, you know, every day. It's not, it wasn't anything heavy. I feel like everyone could really enjoy that wine no matter what your tastes are. It was just kind of like the every, the every day, every one kind of wine. Uh, my favorite, I rated at number one, is the Chateau Bourges et Jour Le Charter, which is from the Bar Bordeaux region in France. I just loved this wine so much. Um, it's, it was the oldest vineyard, had vines from planted from 1901, and it was just so easy to drink and just totally, totally my taste. I enjoyed it so much. Um, it has oaky taste, tart berries, and a little bit of vanilla to round it out. But I, I just really super enjoyed it, and I wish I had more. I'm probably gonna buy more of that wine for sure. Um, yeah, the top three I would definitely buy again without, without any questions. Um, it was just a great experience overall. If you hadn't seen my Wine Wednesdays about them, please check them out on my YouTube channel. They're super in-depth about each of the bottles, and some of them I did do the recipes and posted the, the recipe as well and showed what wine it paired with. Um, 
and typically they all paired really well with the food by themselves you know if you were just eating the uh, if you're eating the food and drinking the wine they all did really well um, pairing so the vegan wine box did a great job pairing those recipes with that wine um, overall the vegan wines box was a great it was a great thing for me to do I really am glad that I did it and I can't wait for the next box they do it um, seasonally so you'll get three of them a year or so um, which is really exciting. I did choose to get cheese with them as well. That is an add-on, so you don't have to get vegan cheese with your order, but I just thought it would be a neat little thing, and the way they paired those cheeses with the wine was perfect as well. Everything went together beautifully. So, yeah, it was definitely well worth it, and if you ever want to check out any of those wines, please do. They were all worth, worth the drink, and, you know, I hope you... <laughs> Hope you liked lending an ear to me for 10 minutes or so, 11, we're going on. But I hope you enjoy the rest of your gosh darn week and join me next week for another wine. And I'm going to do a white wine next week. So super fun, yay. Um, take care, all right, bye.